Shine with Kendall Lanise. Real talk for real people. Let's shine together. Hey, everybody, it's Kendall Lanise. Welcome to Shine with Kendall Lanise, y'all. I had the pleasure of speaking with an amazing woman, and I can't wait for you all to hear. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Laura Broom. She's a resilience coach and author. And y'all, when I say she has been through it, but she's here to talk about it. She is a resilience coach, as I said. Y'all, after 27 years of marriage, she found out her husband was cheating. But not only that, that was after her breast cancer diagnosis, as well as her heart transplant, right? So imagine hearing all of that and then you find out your beloved husband of 27 years has someone else that's not you. How do you even get over that? How do you even wrap your mind around that? Well, you're going to hear her story. And as a resilience coach, she decided to create this how should I say this career move based off of her pain. So she turned her pain into purpose. She turned her, what some might say mess into a message, but I call her a survivor and a warrior and her resilience is unmatched. I can't wait for you all to hear the story of Laura Broom. She's here to tell her story, and I think it's so important for women to share their stories, to give other women permission to share theirs, right? And everybody, you can look at things one way, or you can look at things in a different way, uh, in a way that helps you grow and understand. So, uh, wow, when I think about this, I think about... Her son, she lost, so first, let me tell you, breast cancer. Then she lost her son. Then uh, she had a heart transplant. And then the divorce was sudden. And it showed her through adversity who she was. So listen into this interview, and I'll be back at the end. Thank you, guys. This is Shine with Kendall and East. Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to Shine with Kendall and East. I'm so glad that you are here with us for this 11th season yay, of Shine with Kendall Lanise. I'm so excited to have this show today because as you know, in season 11, we are speaking about relationships. Like we're really going into relationships, not the superficial, I love you and you love me. This is not a Barney song. We're talking about the real work that it takes to keep a relationship or to let one go to learn about you and and self-love and our relationships uh, that need healing or us that need healing so we can be a better partner in a relationship. All the above. You guys asked for this subject. So season 11 is dedicated to relationships. I'm so excited about my guests. I told you guys I was going to bring great guests on this season. So this is, if you this is your first time listening, I must say thank you so much for joining me on my podcast. It means the world to me. You could, there are so many podcasts out there now. So for you to take the time to listen to this, I'm honored and I am appreciative. For all of my people who continuously comment, like my podcast, or have been listening from the beginning from all over the globe. I'm so grateful and thankful that you're still here rolling with me uh, in this season and past seasons. If you're able to subscribe to the podcast, please do so. If you're able to comment and rate, please do that. And also, if this blesses you, please share this with your friends and family and on social media. Okay, so today I have Laura Broom. She is a resilience coach and author. She's an amazing lady. We got a chance to speak a little bit before the show. I think we were actually having a show before the show, before I hit record. 
But let's just say, so she helps individuals overwhelmed by adversity transform pain into purpose so they can flourish in their lives. She is um, a woman after my own heart. We just talked. She is a cancer survivor. And so am I. So I think she knows a little bit about resilience. So today we're going to talk about when a relationship doesn't work. How are we resilient in that? What can we learn from ourselves and in that relationship and what can we bring into a better relationship in a more positive, healed way? So without further ado, Miss Laura Broom. Yay! <laughs> Welcome to Shine With <laughs> So welcome. <laughs> welcome to Shine with Kendall and I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so excited to be here and I, I love the topic that we're going to be talking about. So when I ask you um, about coming on and giving this subject, because I said I love what she's about and what she stands for and one of the the most one of the important silly or fun uh, request that I ask someone has to have a sense of humor because with life and what you go through, you have to be able to, yes, you can transit, trans, trans, um, we can go through transition into different parts of our lives and experiencing adversity, but sometimes you got to have a little humor with what is going on, right? <laughs> you do. Resilient. I mean, uh, having a sense of humor is a big part of a wonderful resilient skill to have. It's, it, sometimes you can't laugh at things when you're, you know, when you're going through the the hardship. But give it time, you can go back and you can find the humor in just about anything. Yeah, and uh, that is a stress release too when you can laugh about things. Yeah, and it's so important, and it's it empowers us too when we're that can we can tell that we've healed or grown from a situation if we're later able to laugh at it <laughs> yes it is and and i do love to laugh i i i think you know if you can't find something to laugh about every day then you're taking life too serious oh i love that say that again please say that again for the people who <laughs> missed it because that's so important <laughs> I believe and, that. Um, yeah, it, it is. And, and it's just like finding joy. You can find joy throughout the day. You just have to look for it. And it's not hard to find. But um, we tend to let life um, kind of take hold of us to where we only see the negativity. And we have to flip that and start looking for, for positive things. And, and that's where gratitude helps you find the beauty in life, the joy in life, and the humor in life. It's so true. It could always be worse. <laughs> it could always be worse. How about that? It could, and I always yeah. say, I want to laugh. Oh, before LOL came, I used to be like, I want to laugh yeah. out loud every single day. Like I want to laugh, like a crazy laugh, in ev like a gut laugh every single day. Yeah. It's so important. You know, people underestimate the power of laughter and even how it can heal. Oh, is that so important? So important. I and mean, it, it, you know, years ago when I was taking life too seriously and I was just working so hard and trying to raise a family and I, I just couldn't, I was just in a bad place. I had too much toxicity you know, in my life where I just, I remember one time waking up and going, what fresh cow am I going to run into today? Mm. And I look back and I go, gosh, I'm so glad I don't live like that anymore. Yeah. And it's a choice. Yeah. But that's so real. Like that right there is so real because many of us have been in places in our lives where we feel that way. Like what's going to be oh, yeah. next? What's going to be next? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's so important to to see 
So when you when you had those moments, what did you do? Inspire someone right now. What did you do? Because there's someone out there listening, even if it's one person. What did you do? Um, you know, in this case, it was really hard because it was coming day after day. Um, what truly changed my life was about four years ago um, in 2020 when uh, COVID was coming, you know, closing everything down. I went in to have a heart transplant and it was very successful. I, uh, they found a heart for me in six days and wow. it stemmed from uh, the, the chemo treatment from my breast cancer, but it, it the, the um, chemo treatment flipped a switch for genetic um, congestive heart failure that I didn't know I had. Mm. And um, so therefore I needed, it, it just got, because of the chemo, it did, uh, you know, with the congestive heart failure, I did a lot of damage to my heart. So I went in um, April of 2020 to have a heart transplant mm -hmm. and it was successful. And I came home Mother's Day weekend and had a wonderful weekend celebrating. I thought this is the best Mother's Day gift I could ever have. And, um, and a month later, I uh, found out um, my husband had been in a uh, um, and then had a relationship for over a year and wanted to divorce. Wow. And, um, so that, yeah, so at, at age 58, I um, had to start my life over again. And um, it, I had so many limited choices at that time because not only with the shutdowns, but um, after a heart transplant, um, they require you to also quarantine for the first year so that your body doesn't reject your heart, your new heart. And um, so I was pretty much at my lowest point then. Um, I had to leave the home that I had um, raised our kids in. Um, I had to um, focus on my um, health um, because um, I, I had a new heart. And I thought, you know, I've got a new lease on life. What am I going to do now? And um, and so that's, you know, <laughs> that was probably worse than waking up going, what, you know, what, what fresh hell am I going to go through today? Because I pretty much felt like I had hit rock bottom. I felt abandoned, betrayed, you know, all those dark, negative feelings. And... Um, I, you know, I was having my, my pity party of one, and um, I, as I was going through all those uh, feelings of grief, and all those different stages of grief, I hit the anger stage, and I got really angry. I thought it, you know, at my husband for doing this at the most inappropriate time after a heart transplant, wow. and, um, but then I realized I was mad at myself. He had moved on, and he had had time to move on, but when I found out about it, it was shock. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't expect it, and, um, and so I had, to, I had to ask myself, are you going to sit here in this pain and let it turn into suffering, or are you just going to accept the fact that he's already moved on, and it's time for you to move on, too? And, and so I, I really didn't have a choice in that matter. The only choice I had was to move on. And, um, and that's kind of where my journey started of picking myself up and you know, accepting my new life with my new heart. And I thought, don't, <laughs> don't, don't mess that up. You know, you got to be loose on life. What are you going to do? And, and, um, so the, the, the concept of radical acceptance, uh, you know, no, no part of, there's different um, ways people explain it, but the radical acceptance, when I learned about it, it was basically, you know, accept what's out of your control and move forward with what's in your control. Yeah. And that, that's where I started. And and then I, I've come to realize, you know, throughout our, our life, we have these necessary endings 
maybe not as drastic as, as what I went through. Necessary. So maybe, let's let's pause on that ending. for a second. Necessary ending. Uh-huh. A necessary yeah, ending. It, I want people to really think about that. Because, like you just said, it yeah, doesn't it, matter how it happens. It was a necessary in- ending. Please continue. Well, it, yes, and, and well, and that's like that's what change is, right? I mean, we know things are going to change throughout our lives. People are going to come and go. People will stay. Um, uh, you know, it's just we we have to be flexible and know that not everything is going to be constant. And um, there's a um, there's a, a quote that I love, um, and it, it's 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 um, by um, Byron Katie. I think is how you say the last name. And it's, when you argue with reality, you lose, but only one hundred percent of the time. Oh, that's so true. And, that's so powerful. And then, I mean, it's basically saying, you know, you can. You can say, well, life's not fair. That shouldn't have happened. You know, he shouldn't have got that promotion or she shouldn't uh, have married, you know, that person. And, you know, life's unfair. And, but, you know, you can't argue with reality. It is what it is. And, and that's how I learned how to practice radical acceptance. Is, can you explain... Um, to, can you can explain to the audience? I know what it is. You know what it is. But someone out there doesn't understand what radical accept, acceptance is. And by the way, if you're just tuning in, this show is how to awaken your superpowers to move beyond adversity when a relationship does not work. And talking about that, that's such a powerful subject because there's so many people out there and when you said a necessary ending like I I got a a shock in my like I felt I can feel that in my body when you say that because everybody has been in some type of relationship when the ending was necessary but you you talk about radical acceptance can you explain that to the audience please Laura sure sure um, radical acceptance is um, it's the ability to accept difficult situations outside of your control, and it's especially those situations that cause you pain and loss. And it, it's not just in romantic relationships. It could be um, with friendships, mm-hmm. uh, with coworkers, um, you know, like a, a mentor or um, a boss mm-hmm. you really look up to. Um, and and it could be family members. Yeah. And um, you know, and, and it's when you when you can learn to separate and understand what's in your control and what's not. That's the beginning of radical acceptance. And what I mean by that is, what's out of your control is basically what other people think, what other people do. Um, what um, um, uh, what um, the, the, you can set goals with the outcome. You don't have control over that. And what it all boils down to is what you do have in control all the time is you've always got control over your thoughts, your words, and your actions. And, and when you start realizing, and that's where, where you the next step is, you know, um, your superpowers, which I'll talk about in a minute. Yeah. But when you realize you don't have control over people, you don't have control over what they think, what they do, because they only have control over themselves. We need a megaphone. Right? We need a megaphone right now. <laughs> we don't, Laura said, we don't have control over people, what they say and what they do. Half of your stress will fly away like a bird in the sky if you understand that you cannot control anyone else's actions, anyone else's say, whatever they they say. And I think people don't understand that that will set you free. Oh my goodness, will it? And, and, And when you realize 
that it is a freeing, it's a freeing moment because that's where necessary endings come in. The way I like to describe necessary endings is you have this beautiful garden and you got some weeds coming in and you've got some fruit trees that are starting to bloom, but you've got all these buds on there and, and you don't have to know a lot about fruit trees, but you know, you've got to prune some of those blooms so that the fruit can grow bigger. And so that's what you're doing with necessary endings. You need to look at your life and look at your garden and those weeds you got to get rid of. You got to you got to um, um, pick off some of those blooms so the fruit can get bigger because all the energy is going to go through all those um, blossoms. Mm-hmm. And so it, you have to pick and choose what's toxic in your life or what's not what's not bringing you happiness. Not that they're anywhere accountable for making you happy, but it, 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 it goes back to setting boundaries. What are your core values and what are your boundaries and who do you want to let in to your garden so that you have the, um, the beautiful flowers, the productive, the fruitful um, plants and trees um, Who do you let you so you're you're skipping past so many gems? Do you guys hear what Laura is saying? <laughs> like I, I just I I don't mean to interrupt, but you're saying some valuable things, some gems, right? Who do you let in your garden? That's powerful. <laughs> Well, it is, and you know, it only took me till I was almost 60 to figure that out. <laughs> That's all right. My saying is it's never too late to remix your life at any stage, age, or phase. So that is quite all right. It is. That is, that is so true. That I have learned right a lot of lessons in my older age, boy, I tell you. <laughs> That's why I'm I doing know, this show, is. so somebody can catch it at 20. <laughs> I know. Oh, my goodness. I know. And, and, and it's so important because I think of all that stress mm-hmm. and all that those toxic people I let in my life, mm-hmm. you know, years ago. And I didn't know that I could just say, no, thank you. You can leave now. <laughs> wow. And and that's how I feel. when I, I mean, because now when I see people, I, you know, I have friends that, you know, they're in the, you know, I don't know, bad relationships. I don't like really using that term, but they're an unhealthy relationship. Unhealthy, either that's the term I use. Yeah. Or at work. And and what it comes down to is it's the, that, that silly comfort zone. We like being comfortable, and when we start getting uncomfortable, and it's kind of scary to step out and do something new, experience change. So we'd rather be miserable in our comfort zone because it's comfortable. Yeah. We're miserable, but we're comfortable. Yeah. And and that's when you have to take a look at your, your life and your relationship and say something's got to change. And, you know, then you have to realize they can't change or, or maybe you can talk and see. The, the best indicator that I figured out um was I learned to recognize red flags and patterns in relationships. Yeah. Because a pattern, you know, a pattern is, is usually it gets to the third time and it's, you know, the first time something happens, it could be a one-off. The yeah. second time it happens, then you start talking about it. And then the third time it happens, you have to decide is this a pattern or if there's still a chance that can, that the behavior yeah. can change or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and the, the, the red flags and patterns are what indi- are indicators of whether the relationship can improve or not. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and um, what I was going to say about patterns, um, when we were in marriage counseling, um, and I will say, this is after I, 27 years of marriage, after your heart transplant, you find out that your husband is having an affair with someone yeah. else. 
that and that who amongst everything else yeah. that you were dealing with yes it, it i mean that like i said it was um i just couldn't understand couldn't understand you know how someone could just flip the switch and say well it's been nice but bye <laughs> and you know and 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 that's you know i i I went back to our marriage counselor for individual counseling because I didn't have to rehash, you know, uh, some, our history because she already knew it. And, um, and, and some, a question she asked me was just really, it was like my aha moment. And uh, to, again, to help me kind of move forward, and she said, what part of his behavior really told you that he would change? And, um, and I realized there wasn't anything. Um, it wasn't the first time he had stepped outside the marriage, um, but it was the last time for me. And it's mm, uh, powerful. And and so, like I said, that's when I started realizing I, I'm angry. I'm angry at myself, waiting for it to change, and it never would change, you know. And 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 so that's when I realized it is what it is. I got to turn, uh, you know, turn my back against that door and move forward. And and I always joke around and say, you know, I it's not like I stepped out of my comfort zone. I was pushed out. The door was shut behind me, locked, bolted, and hammered shut. Wow. <laughs> so, um, you know, I didn't. I, I don't recommend that for anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> to have to move forward. Like you but pretty much got thrown out of your own life, really. I did. Yeah. I, I, I really did. I, I never, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't really see it that way until somebody brought that to my attention. Because I saw it just that I lost, I lost my marriage. Yeah. And, um, somebody said, well, you lost your, your home because you had to move out. And, mm. You know, you lost um, all the memories and, you know, from, well, I didn't really lose the memories, but I mean, it's just, I, we were in that house, you know, over 15 years and it's just it is completely um i'm sure that there's people in your audience that's in their similar situation you know being married i mean i was married half my life yeah and yeah. Um, you know but i but i realized i mean for me what kind of gave me the the spark and the excitement to start over again was that i had a new heart and so mm. i wasn't um, literally, I, I, literally, wow, that's so yeah. powerful. I, I, prior to the heart transplant, I had been, after the chemo stopped, oh my God. Um, that's when everything kind of started happening. My, um, and so for, um, for almost four years between the chemo stopping and the heart transplant, it took them uh, a year or so to kind of finally diagnose what was going on. Hmm. Um, I was did my I just kept getting um, worse and worse because of my heart function, and I became so sedentary and trying to breathe. That was the scariest part because we take so many things that we can do for granted, mm -hmm. uh, moving around and breathing. Mm -hmm. And my, um, I, I mean, it, I had to really um, close my eyes relax my whole body just to take a deep breath mm -hmm. like a yawn I could I could it, it was such a struggle to do that um and so when I found out the heart transplant I was like at that point I was like I I I'll do it I don't I don't really have a choice in the matter because we can't continue living like this mm -hmm. and um so so you know so that radical acceptance was the key and the um, the aha moment for me to move forward, yeah. and not waste my energy on something that was over. Yeah, and, and I think for anybody coming to, or in that situation, I'm, you know, granted, not as not all that um, stuff that I was going through. But I mean, you know, when you're in a dead end relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to admit it, and mm -hmm. you think, and, and you can see maybe it'll get better, mm -hmm. and it might. Yeah. 
But the other person has to be on board. Exactly. Yeah. Both parties have to be willing. Is that something that awakened your superpower? And what is your superpower? And how did you move beyond all of this adversity, in particular this, you know, marriage? Because essentially that was part of your identity. 27 years of marriage is quite a long time. You've built something together and you're going through all of these health challenges. Like how in the world did you find your superpower and you were able to be the woman you are right now, you know, in spite of all of that? Yes. Well, um, prior to the divorce, um, we had started a business together. Uh, and and, and I, I ran the day-to-day operations, um, I don't know, about eight years. And so I um, couldn't do that either. You know, um, the heart transplant pretty much kind of, put an end to really um, continuing anything from the marriage. So um, so I, I um, sold my part of ownership of the business and that I had to figure out what I was going to do for a living. Mm. And um, uh, I So your whole life changed. Like your whole entire oh, life, whole life was flipped upside my down. Whole life. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I was starting from scratch again at yeah. age 58, yeah. you know, and it's like, well, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't even try to find a job with an employer because number one, everything, you know, online now. And, um, I can't, I mean, I, I've got to spend a year quarantined, um, wow. you know, so, and so I, I started, so that's how I came up with the superpowers. It's like, okay. What are my skills? What are my talents? What are my character strengths? What are, you know, hobbies? What do I like to do? What are my passions? And I made, listed everything out. And I was like, okay, how can I kind of regroup all these things and use them in new ways? And um, being a small business owner, it's like, well, I know how to run a business. Okay, what are you going to do? Like, wow. Well, I can't be around people, so um, what am I good at? Well, I'm kind of good at. Everybody keeps telling me, you know, I'm good at going through hardship, and I have a sense of humor, and I'm so resilient. I'll be a resilience coach. If I can do it, I can teach others how to do it. <laughs> wow. And um, that's you know that's eventually kind of that's what I could work with. Wow. And, um, so through and, this adversity, and, uh, you found your true gifts. I did. I mm. love. I love helping people. I love teaching people. Um, with the, the the business we had, I was always training our staff, and and um, you know everybody said I, I was a good trainer. I I teach things um, in in easy enough you know ways to understand, and I have patience while people are learning. And but most of all, I just love to see people overcome their issues Mm -hmm. and so um the 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 you know discovering your superpowers is kind of the second step in my three-step framework and yes um, talk about yep yeah well the the first step is we kind of talked about it had developing a growth mindset and 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 that's going from victim to victor and you know a, a growth mindset is saying that if you're either su- you su- succeed at something or you're just not there yet and you got to learn and tweak until you get there. Mm-hmm. Failure is not an option mm-hmm. as, long as, as long as you're learning, um, you know, from what didn't work. And um, because, you know, that, that's how people invent things. You know, they get mm-hmm. an idea and that something didn't work, so they tweak it and try something else. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what victors are. You know, um, you just don't accept failure because you're, you're going to find a way to do it. Yeah. And um, and that's that growth set mentality. And, and I think, you know, radical acceptance is one of the biggest parts of that, that developing that growth mindset because you have to let go of what you cannot change mm. and put all your energy on what you can do to move forward. Mm. And 
let go of what change. you cannot change. Yeah. Because it sounds we, simple, we, but it's we, difficult for people. It, it sounds is. very it simple. Is. And people are like, yeah. The people that got it, they're like, yeah, duh. But the people, it just resonated with somebody in a different way. I'm going to tell you that right now because it's so simple. And sometimes the most simple things are the toughest to, to really deal with when it comes to adversity and, and ending a relationship. It is. And, and my, my solution to that is to start with baby steps. Um, baby steps it can be just little just, you know, just little baby steps to get you started. And then when you start seeing some progress and you start achieving small goals as a larger goal, you start gaining more confidence. You start gaining excitement because you're seeing progress. And, and, and so, you know, that's, again, that's once you find your superpowers, and, you know, there were things that I didn't know how resilient I was until I went through after the divorce mm-hmm. and trying to put my life back together because I've always been kind of, you know, kind of average and problem solving, but I had to get creative. And, and that is a characteristic of a survivor is that you will find a way and if you, mm-hmm. if you're trying to get to, B, and you realize, ooh, I'm not going to get there, but I can get to D or mm-hmm. maybe F, mm-hmm. then you're going to pivot, flex, be, you know, flexible, change course, and find a way to get there. Yeah. And so I think that's one of the, you know, the, the biggest things, too, that by being creative with your superpowers, you learn to see opportunities where you can be flexible and change course to take advantage of that opportunity when it arises. So you, and that's what that growth mindset means is you're always growing. You're always, you don't see failure. You don't see, okay, well, that's the dead end, but you do have to recognize when is it time to say, okay, I just don't have control over the situation anymore. I'm going to have to set it aside. Yeah. You know, if all your options, they're kind of running away, the idea is good, but maybe you need to look at it again or set it aside. Um, I think that, that's kind of, that's hard, too. When, when do you know when to stop? Yeah. <laughs> when do you know when to call it quit? What was but, the biggest um, lesson that you learned um, going through this, through your divorce? What And what is the biggest lesson you learned about yourself other than your resilient? You know, one of the, the things that I came up with, uh, well, there's two things. Um, when I find myself saying, shoot, I can't do that, or that's not an option, I would flip it and say, okay, what can I do? Mm. And, 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 and that, that turned into, like, um, I call it my nine, my nine, nine word um, solution. If I can't do that, then I can do this, and and I would find what can I do, and um, because that's when you're looking at how to move forward, and you can find something. Sometimes it's like some like some days I just they, my day was so dark. I would say you can get out of bed. You can get you can put a just paint, change your pajama top to a regular shirt. You could put, you know, your, your pajama pants on to change your shirt. You can do that. Mm. Sit on the couch. You can do that. Mm. You know, and then things, you know, things, and then I just, you know, keep progressing. Um, you can take a shower and go run to the store just to get out. You can do this. You can call a friend. You know, and, and when you start looking at what you can do, there's so many. You see, there, there's just unlimited possibility. And, um, you know, which, which led to my, my third step is, um, you know, thinking outside the box to uncover opportunities. And, and it gets to the point where once you start 
you know, just start looking at positive things and being, um, practicing gratitude every day, it, it, you will find that there's so many opportunities mm-hmm. out there that you would not have seen before. Mm-hmm. And, and people will see the change in you. Um, once I got to this point, uh, it was about um, a little over a year, you know, after everything, um, I saw somebody um, that I hadn't seen in a while, and, and she said, my gosh, Laura, you're glowing. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> she said, no, I, mm-hmm. I said, this is joy. I mm-hmm. learned to find joy you know, through all this mess, and I'm happy, and, um, you know, and, and I'm nobody special, you know, I mean, I've been through some hard things, but if I can, if I can find joy, and I can, you know, I, I can change my life for the better, I know, you know, there's people who can do this too, for and sure. it, it's just making that choice, because we all have choices, you know, my husband could have um, chose change his ways, but he chose not to. So I had to accept that. But I could change my life for the better. Yeah. And I did, you know. And it, and like I said, it's it, it's making that choice that you're going to do what's in your control, and, and and you're going to make good choices. I love that. I love that. I mean, you're, you're right now, you're blessing someone because there's someone out there that is going through that right now and they feel like they can't even go on. What do you mean resilient? Like I'm in the bed. I can't change my clothes. You know, I'm sad. I'm crying. I'm thinking about what happened play by play. You know, there's someone like in the midst of it right now. So your story, you have no idea, or maybe you do how you're encouraging someone else um as we wind down i want to talk about i cope to hope the three step uh the three what is it the three flourish the three step flourish in your life i'm sorry step resilient the framework Uh, i'm sorry yeah Uh uh-huh yes yes um well i um i've recently um published a book that um um, if it's okay to say this right now, hundred percent. I, I detail. Okay, I detail the framework that I just talked about mm-hmm. in, in my book, and um, and it's available for free on my website. Tell them the name um, of the book. Tell okay. them the name. Okay, it's it, 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 the book is called Flourishing After Adversity: mm-hmm. A Three Step Action Plan to Transform Pain into Purpose and Rediscover and um, um, Embrace. Uh, joy again embrace joy again embrace joy and again. um it's it, it, it's it's um they can get a free copy of the paper book um on my website um they just have to pay shipping and handling uh, i believe it's 4.99 shipping and handling and um and for u.s orders only so um, flourishing after uh, adversity guys it's a free book. Someone out there, even if you're not going through it right now, this would make an amazing gift for someone, one of your friends or family members or someone that you even see online that is going through it. They're putting videos up. They're calling people. You know that they're going through it. This will help someone, and it's totally free. All you have to do is pay for shipping and handling. I think that that's an amazing gift, even to give yourself. Yes, and I wrote it. I wrote it because I couldn't find anything like this to help me move forward. Mm. And it, 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 it's an easy read. I wrote it um, because when you're going through hardship, it's hard to think. You are just overwhelmed with so much stuff going on in your life. So I wrote it's an easy read, it's like a reference manual. And it has a little bit of, it has some stories about what I've been through um, prior to um, the breast cancer and the heart transplant. Um, and uh, some of the stories are, are kind of funny, um, what not to do. I, I, most of my stories about what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> and we need um, those. We need cautionary this, tales. <laughs> we need this, right? I just want to say, I didn't have anything like this to, to go by. Um 
but then um, I, I tell a little bit of my story, and then I talk about the concepts, the coping strategies and resilience skills um, for that type of situation, and then I end the chapter with the rest of my story, and then I have some um, uh, questions at the end of the chapter uh, to, to help put those, apply those concepts into the reader's life if they're going through something. I love so, that. Um, I love a good it, workbook. It, it, to make you can read it in three hours if you just sat down to read it. Um, I'm working on an audio book too, but right now um, it, it, it takes to read the whole book about three hours. And, I love that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I just want people to know that there's hope out there. Yeah. And this is just a framework that I think would work for so many people. And there's a chapter in there about leaving a legacy of resilience mm. for the next generation. Laura, and I think that's mm, so important. Mm, mm. It's super important. It's Laura. This is Laura Broom, guys. And I'm just, wow. So you found your superpower actually in you. You probably didn't even know it was there. I, I didn't. I didn't. Um, and 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 it was. I'm so I'm so glad I found it. Yeah, I'm <laughs> because, so glad you found um, it. I love to encourage people, and I, and I I see potential in so many people, and it's just hard to step out of your comfort zone and and try to accept change. Yeah. But, we're going to have change. It, 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 you, you can't change the unchangeable, but you can change the changeable. That's stop right and there. You can't change. Say that again because we're going to. unchangeable. You yeah. You cannot. There were so many gems in, in this episode. I, I think I'm going to talk to Laura to, to come back and do a part two because there are so many things that we can talk about. And as we're at the end of the show winding it down that 45 minutes went quick <laughs> it went so I, fast I know. well if, if you don't remember anything just remember go to i cope to hope.com mm-hmm. and, and, and uh, forward slash free book and 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 get the and i'll be happy to send you the book i'm um, gonna get i know i'm I, gonna I just get, it. get the book into so many people's hands because it, it changed my life, and I, I want people to, to, to have hope and flourish after adversity. Wow. It's a wonderful feeling to feel joy and hope. Yeah, again. it is. All right, we're going to go with this week's takeaway and wow moment from today's show. All right, it's time for this week's gem takeaways from today's show. So my takeaway from today's show is you can't let everybody in your garden. (laughs) And if you're just, if you're, if that's the only, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to start this episode from the beginning because it's so true. And you, she talked about the flat, you have to listen to that part. So that's going to be your homework because that is my takeaway and I'm going to ask you, Laura, even though you have been dropping the gems and the wow moments of this episode, what is one takeaway that you would um, say you had from this episode? Um, one of the things that I love to say is to summarize everything is adversity makes you bitter or better. Choose better and, and, and change your life. Flourish after adversity. And that's how we're going to end this episode. This was amazing. We are speaking to Laura Broom. She is a resilience coach and an author. You heard her talk about her book. So definitely go to her site. I'll have everything in the body of this podcast. But go to her site and get this book, Gift One and Get One. Laura, I thank you so much for being on Shine with Candelanese. You have been fantastic. And I'm so glad that you found your superpower. I'm so glad that you are alive, that you survived with many people. You Many people don't even survive divorce. You survived heart transplant. You survived breast cancer. And I'm so grateful and thankful that God saw fit to keep you here because 
You know, what you have learned through this adversity has really been able to bless other people in, when they're walking through their adversity to show them how resilient they are. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a joy talking to you. Oh, likewise. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to Shine with Kendall and If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, please do so. If you're able to follow, like, uh, or comment, please do so. And remember to share this out. You are a star. Don't allow anyone to dim your shine. Until next time, God bless you. Peace. Wasn't that fantastic, y'all? That was Laura Broom. She said, let's leave the legacy of resilience. I know that you see examples of resilience in your own self, in your own family, the people right around you. And that should be your superpower. No matter what has happened in your life, you've managed to still be here. You decided to keep going in spite of everything that you've been through. Every adversity that you've faced, every challenge, every sickness, every hurt, pain, all of that. And you're still here. Relationships are beautiful, but sometimes they just don't work out for whatever reason. They're not meant to go the distance no matter what. And that sometimes it's hard, it's difficult, but you still get through it. And you're leaving the legacy of resilience. Everybody, I'm so glad that you listened to this episode. Don't be stingy. Please share this out. If it blessed you, I'm sure it will bless others. This is Kendall Anise, the Remix Coach. For more information about me, go to KendallAnise.com. Follow me on all social media platforms at Kendall Anise. Don't forget to book your free life coaching consultation, KendallAnise.com. Thank you for listening. God bless you guys. Once again, peace.